I recently picked up this Ibanez GSRM 25 short scale 5 string bass online after doing quite a bit of research. I did take a bit of a risk on it because I wasn't completely confident in the quality of the instrument for the price that I paid. It was under $200 through one of the online retailers and there's content on YouTube to get an idea of the quality of the bass and how it sounds, but a lot of it is cell phone recorded video and it's tough to tell. So I wanted to make a video just to show a little bit about the unboxing, give a good demo of different settings of the tone for both the neck, bridge, and both pickups together and also give some close-ups of the bass to show the quality of the build. So that's what we're here in this video for today, and as you can see, this is the unboxing. Nothing special other than it's a box with a bass, with a maintenance manual, and also Allen keys to adjust the truss rod and the saddles on the bridge. Next, after this, we're going to go into the demo to show the different tone settings. To help out folks with better understanding of the quality of this bass without actually having one in their hands, I wanted to give a couple of close-ups of different sections of the bass just to give a better idea of the build quality and the material quality. So I'll start at the headstock. It's the standard Ibanez headstock, but I read online that some folks had concerns that the tuners were chromed plastic, and these, I can confirm, are chrome metal, not plastic, so they're decent quality. I've had this bass for a little over a week and have played it almost every day, and these tuners have held up with their tuning pretty well, so I would recommend keeping these unless you're dead set on changing the tuners. These are great, especially if it's just a first bass or just a budget bass that you like to mess around with. Uh, these hold tune very well for that purpose. The truss rod cover, this is actually an easy access truss rod cover. If you can reach in between those strings with your fingernail, you can slide that truss rod cover open to get your Allen key in there to adjust the truss rod. So that's a great feature. You don't have to fully remove all three screws of the truss rod cover to access it. Now the nut is a plastic nut. Let's see if we can get in here and see. There's a little bit of uh, their plastic burrs from where the nut was cut at the factory. You can kind of see they weren't cleaned up that well under the strings. But the notches are all great. Uh, the strings seat in them very well, so even though it's plastic, for the purposes of a budget base, this nut is acceptable to me. Going up the neck is just standard. All the way to the body, we have the neck pickup and the bridge pickup. We have a neck volume, a bridge volume, and a tone. So there's no switch to cut the neck off or the bridge off. Uh, you just adjust the, the balance with both of those knobs. These knobs are metal knobs. They're not plastic. I've confirmed that. Folks had concerns of that as well online, that these were just chrome plastic knobs. These are nice metal knobs. Nice chromed bridge. Metal saddles, metal adjustment screws, metal bridge. Everything is great there. Strap buttons are both good. Metal strap buttons. Again, just to back up with the body of the base just to get an idea of it. We'll flip it over onto the back. Just the plastic control plate. Four bolts to hold the neck on. Satin finish on the back of the neck. I believe that that's pretty typical of Ibanez. Let me spin this around. All the way up to the back of the headstock. Things are upside down, but it's not necessary to read that. I just wanted to show the back of the tuners as well, just to get a, a better view of those, better idea. And that is the close-up of the bass. 
Hey, in closing, I wanted to mention a little bit about the setup of the bass. I did not cover that in the video, but I did have to put some relief in the neck by adjusting the truss rod. I did have to raise the action of the strings. I, rose, I raised the height of the strings, and I also adjusted the intonation of each string by bringing the saddle up or down. So all of those adjustments went over pretty well. The truss rod was no problem to adjust. The saddle was raised very easily to bring the strings up and down to adjust that action. And then for the intonation, that was the only thing that took a little bit of extra time because a couple of the strings were almost bottoming out. The saddle almost ran out of adjustment space. Uh, but luckily, all five strings did intonate. It was just a little bit tricky with a couple of those strings to get it just right because uh, they were so close to bottoming out on the bridge. But other than that issue, everything adjusted really well. I did adjust the pickups a little bit as well. That was simple to do. Uh, they came out of the box pretty close to the string, so I lowered them just a tiny bit. And since doing that, I have had very, very few issues with fret buzz. Mostly that's in my technique. I'm originally a guitar player, so this is a bass that I'm trying to use to get more acquainted with the bass with something that's a lot more comfortable for me and something that I can gig with. So all of the fret buzz that I have right now, I think is in my hands just from my kind of poor bass technique. So it's set up really well. I think it's very playable. For under $200, my assessment is that this is a fantastic bass. If you're looking for a budget bass, a first bass, or a simple gigable bass that you don't mind to toss in the back seat uh, or let it kind of fall around on stage a little bit, under $200, this is a fantastic deal. Uh, but one last thing I wanted to mention, if there was anything in the video that I didn't cover uh, and you have a question about, feel free to put that in the comments. If I did cover something and it's a concern to you, put that in the comments as well. And also any bass players who are out there, as I mentioned, I'm not traditionally a bass player. I'm picking this up to get more acquainted with it. If you saw anything in the video, heard anything, have any concerns from a bass player perspective, please put those in the comments. I'd like to see those too. Um, and I'll do my best to answer all the comments if you have specific questions for me. Otherwise, I look forward to hearing some of the feedback that folks have out there on this bass, uh, if they've tried it or if they're looking to try it. So hopefully this helps some folks out. Thanks so much for watching uh, and have fun.